My next guest has spent the past decade teaching kids about the importance of this issue. Adair Donaldson is a lawyer and member of the Queensland Premier's Domestic and Family Violence Prevention Council. Good day, Andy. Age-appropriate consent education has been mandatory since 2023, from the first year of schooling to, I think, year 10. What are some of the changes made uh, to this new syllabus we're seeing? Andy, I have been working with schools since uh, 2007, and I can put my hand on my heart and say that in schools already, there is uh, considerable consent training already going on. Um, so that's from young age all the way through. What is being proposed by the New South Wales government, particularly in relation to the, I think it's the 2027 syllabus, is to introduce very prescriptive training in relation to uh, consent and uh, in relation to um, other issues associated with that as well, particularly with respect to pornography, as I understand it. Now, the challenges with that is that the age of consent, obviously, is 16, and it would seem that the training that is going to be introduced, that is going to be delivered by the schools, uh, is going to be starting from 11 onwards. Now, I'm all for educating people age appropriately. That's good. What I believe the challenge is, and great concern that I have, is we continue to stack our curriculum with these social issues and we continue to put pressure on our teachers to be addressing these social issues. At some point, we've got to draw a line in the sand and say, what role are parents going to play? And instead of having mandatory training with respect to the kids, what I believe we should be doing is certainly aiming to make sure that parents are taking more responsibility in relation to these issues. So as, as, as it may be, whilst it may be really well intentioned, and you know, the as I say, the work that Chanel Contos has done in the past, or our watch or teachers' consent, has been incredible. It's been powerful. It's wonderful. But what I get concerned about with this prescriptive training is that the pressure that it places on our schools um, is uh, is overwhelming. At a time when our teachers are, you know, any social issues that seem to be occurring, we keep on putting this onto the schools and saying, well, you're going to now introduce it into the curriculum. The problem with that is, what are you going to take out? It's, uh, it, it does cause me, and, and I say this, Andy, from dealing with schools for many, many years. I have got such respect for our teachers, for our schools, what they are doing to address community issues. But I do get concerned, particularly when we're putting this on to teachers to be to be delivering mm. this training that is really, um, you know, not everybody is able to deliver this training. Um, I'm so, not sure so, uh, the teachers signed off to this either. Okay, so you, there's a couple of good points there. L let me ask you about whether or, or not the curriculum can have any bearing on 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 getting the parents involved because of course it can't i mean what no, what are children can't. what are children actually saying if you're at the front uh, lines of this what are children telling you about the level of consent training they're getting in at this sort of age oh, appropriate Andy, I, I can tell you what i'm seeing and i've been seeing this for many years is that the the kids are switching off at the moment particularly young men because they are uh, getting training that sometimes um, whilst well-intentioned, is going well beyond what the law is. So how well beyond? What do you mean by that? Because anecdotally, I have friends who have young um, boys turning 11 and 12. Their first uh, formal uh, interaction with education around sexuality is about consent, this sort of legal risk. So those parents are sort of expressing risk that perhaps the boys are uh, misunderstanding interpersonal relationships purely through a, a legal lens. So what, what, what are they saying? Uh, well, my concern, with, particularly with some of the training that's being delivered, is particularly with young men, is that what they're hearing about masculinity is that masculinity is bad. Now, that may not be the message that people want out there, but the message that young men are hearing is that masculinity is a problem. And, now, do, you, and do you think that that is because the, the, the majority of teachers are female, 70 odd percent, and no, therefore if, no, if it's coming from, if this consent training is coming from those teachers, do you see a, an issue there or a cause there? No, no, I don't think it's who's delivering the training. It's these, this overwhelming message that is coming out at the moment with respect to uh, the focus being on masculinity. So what I say is masculinity, there's some really positive features about masculinity. You know, there's some really... 
strong messages. So positive values that can come through masculinity. So mm. not ma- all masculinity is bad. Mm. And I, I do get concerned, and I, I think we've got a little bit off track here, but I do get concerned that we are not engaging with men at the moment because men of all ages are turning off. You know, they are not engaging. And that's a problem. Mm. So from my perspective, you know, the, the, I have to stick to what my lane is. And my lane is getting people to understand what the law is and what the legal consequences are. Because one thing I know is that we are never, ever, ever going to eradicate sexual assaults from occurring. We are never going to prevent sexual assaults from, um, from stopping. We're never going to stop domestic violence. But what we can do is we can eradicate the ignorance associated with the law surrounding sexual harassment, uh, mobile phones, all those sorts of things. We can eradicate the ignorance so people can never, ever say that they didn't know what the consequences were going to be. 24 minutes past four, you're listening to RN Driver. Dare Donaldson is with me. He's uh, a lawyer uh, with a long time uh, of experience of teaching uh, consent training in schools. What do you think about this conversation? 0418 uh, This text says, uh, if you don't know what consent is, you're not ready for sex. This one, Mark from Nary Warren says, so many parents worry about what radical socially left-wing teachers are pushing onto our children. It's why homeschooling is growing. The undermining of parents' role scares me. Uh, and lots of memories as well on the text line of sex education for you. Uh, this person says, we had sex ed in Year 7 Science in 1977. I'll never forget the teacher filling up a condom with water to demonstrate how strong they are. Those memories uh, can never quite leave your mind, can they? Uh, the New South Wales syllabus that comes in in 2027, I believe, includes how to, uh, well, the, how the portrayal of sexuality and sexual health in the media and online content may influence attitudes towards safe, respectful and consensual relationships, end quote. Are you seeing the effects of social media and online content on young people in schools? Well, I am seeing a lot of that and invariably what's happening. I mean, I turning to the dreadful examples of Andrew Tate because they are hearing other messages which aren't, you know, giving them the, the positive role models of men that they need. So again, that's, I, I suppose I come back and, and I have to stick with what I know and what I know is the law. And I say that the very baseline that we should be educating people about is what the legal consequences of behaviour are. So if someone is going to engage in sharing inappropriate images or if someone is going to engage in, in racist or homophobic um, social media content, they need to know what the consequences are. And Andy, I'll give you a classic example. At the moment, all of our schools, no matter which school is about, is that we're seeing these dreadful social media posts or lists that are out there where young men are rating their classmates. We saw it happen down at the Yarra Valley uh, Grammar School, but it's not, you know, it's just not Yarra Valley. I'm, I'm telling you that it is in schools, left, right and centre are dealing with these issues. Now, what I know is that type of behaviour where a student comes along and rates his classmates with respect to their looks or um, you know, the dreadful classification of, of, of people, that... If they were to do that in the workforce, they wouldn't have a job. If they were to do that in work, not only would they not have a job, but they would have a hard time finding another job. So one of the roles of the school is to make sure that we're preparing our kids for life after school. That's the whole focus there. So then walk out, they know what their responsibilities are. So again, that that is unlawful behaviour. So someone may want to look at that through a lens of, of, um, of educating about gender and those sorts of things, well, the very baseline that we should be educating our children with is what are what is the law and what the legal consequences are. And just to, to include young ladies in this as well, what what kind of messages are they receiving? Are they receiving what they need? Uh, the consent training, I think, as you've said, has been going for some time. Are the right messages, the right education uh, sort of landing there for them? Andy, I've been engaged in this space since 2007. And I can put my hand on my heart and say that we have come a long way since 2007 to where we are at the moment. There, there is so much more awareness about what is consent and what are people's rights and where they can go should they experience uh, an episode of sexual harassment or sexual assault. Because let's not forget in Australia, we're still talking about 52% of women aged 15 years and above are going to experience at least one episode of sexual harassment. Let's not forget that we're talking about one in three women 
uh, 15 years and over are going to experience one episode in relation to sexual assault. Let's not forget that similar statistics with respect to domestic violence. And domestic violence is now looking at an age group between 16 to 24. So <laughs> we know that we, we, you know, the information that we need to be, or that young women need to be hearing, is that this is not acceptable. This is what you can do if it happens to you and giving them the confidence to know that they have the power to make a complaint, they have a power to say no, they have a power to, you know, to um, take steps to redress this behaviour. And I would far prefer that they're getting, and uh, they understand that now, rather than waiting until they're 30 years of age and then coming to the realisation that what happened to them was wrong. Mm. So, you know, it's, it's about educating them so that they know what, um, what they can do should it happen to them or should it happen to one of their friends? Adair, really appreciate your time this afternoon. Adair Donaldson is a lawyer and member of the Queensland Premier's Domestic and Family Violence Prevention Council. And if this uh, conversation's raised issues for you, 1800 Respect, 1800 737 732. Nice to talk to you, Adair. <laughs>